Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be solving example 4.2, which is related to video number 11, where we looked at the Bernoulli's equation. So in this example, we're going to look at flow through a nozzle, and specifically, I'm going to look at what pressure would be required to give a certain velocity. So we've got our relevant equation listed at the top here, and the example we're going to do is for a nozzle. So it says, air flows steadily at low speed through a horizontal nozzle, discharging to atmosphere. We remember that just means the pressure at the discharge point is atmospheric pressure. Then it says the area inlet is 0.1 meters squared. At the nozzle exit, the area is 0.02 meters squared. So we have to determine the gauge pressure required at the nozzle inlet that's going to give us an outlet speed of 50 meters per second. Okay, so it's asking us what pressure do we have to give to this nozzle to get this outlet speed of 50 meters per second. So we can recall for a second this is directly asking us to relate pressures and velocities. And so we know the only way we've done that so far is in section four here with our Bernoulli equation. So that's how we know we have to use that. So I'll write that out here. It's the exact same equation that's given above there. Okay, now in these questions, it always pays to make sure we have a figure. The figure is already drawn for us here in this example. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and list all the assumptions. We remember how we mentioned that the Bernoulli equation is one of the most misused equation in fluid mechanics. So we'll list all our assumptions here and make sure it makes sense to apply it in this case. Okay, most of those are given. It's said it's flowing steadily for number one there. Incompressible at number two, we don't see any reason to have a big density shift, for example, temperatures or anything like that. Frictionless, yeah, that one we'll see as we march through the, the future sections when we can assume that or not. It's not a bad assumption in this case to assume that there's not a whole lot of friction from the walls of the nozzle. It's along a streamline. Again, that's really shown explicitly in our figure there, so we make sure we follow a streamline. Z1 equals Z2, so there's no elevation shift. And then we also have uniform flow. And again, we remember uniform flow can really mean we're, we're just using an average value there at the uh, inlet and outlet as well. And so since we're given this single value for a velocity, we assume again that's uniform flow or really we're just saying that's an average velocity across the surface. Okay, so we're gonna wanna simplify our equation. First things first, uh, with no elevation change, we can blast the um, elevation terms. Now, Bernoulli just says we have to balance between the pressure and the velocity at the inlet and the outlet. We see we, at the outlet there, we're given its atmospheric pressure. We're told the velocity needs to be 50 meters per second. So we have both things at the outlet and neither at the inlet. We recall at this point of the course that we have to have a mass balance. We're given the areas at the inlet and outlet and velocity at the outlet. So we know we can go ahead and use a mass balance to figure out what the velocity at the inlet is. So let's do that first. I wanna emphasize here at this point too, I've had a few people come to office hours and ask me for help with some of the questions they're solving. And what I notice a lot of times is when people get into trouble, they're sort of starting with equations from examples they saw or jumping halfway down through examples I really want to emphasize here, you should always start with your base governing equations. Anytime you, you solve a problem, just start with the basic mass balance or the basic Bernoulli's equation or the basic momentum balance. In every case, that's what's going to make the most sense and that's what's going to give you the most likelihood of getting a correct answer here. Okay, so in solving for the mass balance, we sub in now. So it's the summation over across all the surfaces, right? So at surface one there, the dot product tells us that the velocity is incoming, the area is outgoing, so that's negative. At the outlet, the velocity and the area are pointed in the same direction, so that one's positive. Okay, another big thing too I'm noticing is not keeping the units. Make sure you keep your units. It really is the best way to double check that you're doing things properly, that your answers make sense. So 10 meters per second, in order to have a mass balance, we have to have 10 meters per second at our inlet there, and now we're asked to calculate the pressure. So we go ahead and simplify Bernoulli's equation so we can calculate the pressure. Okay. 
and it's air flowing through this nozzle. So as we sub in here, we're looking for air at standard conditions and everything else is given. So I'll go ahead and sub in. Okay, that's our answer. So we reflect on that for a moment. We're asked to determine the gauge pressure required at the inlet. So we notice P1 minus P atmosphere, that is the gauge pressure, right? So that's why we can go ahead and just write that as our answer. Gauge pressure has the atmospheric pressure subtracted, right? Now we're going to pause and reflect here. So what's incredible about this result is the fact that you essentially only need 1.48 kilopascals to get a speed of 50 meters per second. 50 meters per second is extremely fast. Right? So I think as we note this, 1.48 kilopascals, so atmospheric pressure is 101 kilopascals. So this is roughly 1% of atmospheric pressure. That's all that's needed to generate this velocity of 50 meters per second. Right? So it goes to show us the power that we have in changing these pressures and velocities. It's incredible. It's really incredible when you stop to think about it that only 1.48 kilopascals gives you 50 meters per second. Okay, and that's all for example 4.2. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.